yeah so in the first path we got uh, administrator access for uh, web application okay mm -hmm. so for other paths uh we already got these two uh, buckets name bucket names mm -hmm. that is fraud blog app uh, minus garbage and then function bucket minus garbage so what you can try to do is first thing is uh, so currently we are enumerating gcb buckets storage buckets uh, so this is the first one prod blog so if you see access denied we don't have permission to list files okay mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we uh, so what basically we can do is uh we can enumerate which bu which bucket is public by just changing the names here if you are uh, yeah so let me show you so if i try type, type here hello 1 2 3 4 5 here okay and press enter so you you get the error that this bucket does not exist can you make these bigger okay yes cool. so uh, i just entered some some random name for the bucket which i already know that this does not exist so we got this error by the google that this bucket does not exist mm -hmm. So whereas in the case of our bucket, we got access denied. So by, uh, so like this, we can brute force which bucket exists or which does not exist. If, uh, uh, are you getting means, means, uh, so like this, you can enumerate which bucket exists and, uh, which is publicly available yeah, yeah, on definitely. Google pl cloud platform. Okay. So in our case, we got two buckets and both of these do not have this uh, permission to list files. Okay. Okay. See again, storage bucket, uh, storage objects dot list does not exist. So uh, for doing this type of enumeration, we have a tool by uh, Rhino security mm -hmm. and uh, I have already downloaded that. That is GCP bucket brute. You can install that uh, by going to their GitHub repo. Okay, so this is the tool which you can use for uh, enumerating DC buckets. Okay. And uh, it will also show you the permissions which you have for the particular bucket. So I have already installed this tool. Uh, if I run that, mm -hmm. can you make these? So let bigger? me show you help for this. Yes. <coughs> a little bit more bigger, if you don't mind. Yes. So if you go through the help of this, uh, we need to pass these parameters. So first thing is minus minus check. So in the check parameter we are passing, we, we need to pass the name of the bucket, which you want to check whether it exists or not. Okay. And uh, we can also pass a list means list of buckets means a file name, which contains uh, lists of buckets, which you want to check whether they exist or not. And uh, you can pass a word list as well. So mm -hmm. normal uh, kind of HTTP root forcing. Okay, we are doing here. Uh, and we can also pass account credentials. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can also use minus u for unauthenticated for public buckets. Okay. <clears throat> so the same thing let's try to do using this tool, which we did here. Okay. Uh, bucket name as this prod minus minus check. Yeah. And minus U for 
unauthenticated okay okay so same thing okay but more uh, in more readable format storage objects dot get we only have get permission so be, uh, what this means is if you know the path of the file in inside the bucket you can read that file but oh. if you don't know the path you cannot <coughs> uh, read the uh, you cannot list the files or folders okay mm -hmm. for that you need uh, list permissions so pretty handy tool okay you can uh, use this for enumerating gcp buckets yeah, yeah. Uh, so in our case yeah so in our case we have uh, this prod bucket so what we can try to do is let's modify prod to development t e v e l o p m e n t bucket does not exist so i am just enumerating uh let's try staging does not exist let's try dev so for dev we got access denied mm -hmm. so what we can infer from this is this bucket exist means exists but we don't have uh, uh, listing files for uh, function uh, permissions uh i hope you are getting this yeah, so yeah. we found a bucket by changing the uh, name from prod to dev and uh, we got to know about another bucket which exists but we don't have uh, listing files permissions uh let's save this as well in our findings uh so let's use this tool now to enumerate permissions for this dev bucket mm -hmm. so we got to know that we have get im policy as well as set im policy so uh what you can do is you can so this is a pretty bad permission to give to <coughs> bucket and we, which is public <laughs> uh We so can, we can abuse this, okay? Mm -hmm. We can grant ourselves some some permissions to to list the bucket. Yes, yes. So, uh, as an un unauthenticated user, uh, we can try to give ourselves admin access for this bucket. Mm -hmm. And for that, either you can use GS Util. So there is another utility. Uh, gs util minus minus help so this is for uh, uh, storage uh, storage buckets okay gs util and or you can go through the documentation that how to do this basically this will show you uh, you need to send a request with these parameters and the permission which you want to set so you can manually also grant yourself without using gs util okay okay so read this uh, so we basically we need to uh, send a put request to to this endpoint by and change your bucket this bucket to your bucket name which you want to uh, for which you are giving access mm -hmm. means giving yeah, we, adding more permissions we can and, use uh, the tool or we can yeah, so you can use go through this yeah you can i uh, mean manually also do this and uh, i have done that uh, yeah manually this will be the request Yeah, you can copy this as well. Okay. And modify your bucket name and just send this. So what uh, what we basically uh, what I did is basically I just added this JSON part. So I I I gave all users uh, this role mm -hmm. storage dot admin. So by giving this role, uh, we became uh, administrator. 
so let's uh, go for simpler path that is for gs util and uh, one more thing you can do is because i am i have already uh, configured the credentials for my admin account in this vm so for using gs util it will use those uh, so what we can do is we can create a new user, new user quickly let's say test uh, and then login su test bash yeah <clears throat> so uh so what i basically did is i created a new user because my current user uh this root user mm -hmm. was configured with uh credentials already mm -hmm. that was here if i show you this the, uh, in my home directory dot config and g cloud so my credentials were these are admin credentials okay these are already configured so if i use ds util using uh, as a root as root user so these credentials will automatically be used yeah uh, i hope you are getting so i just created a new user so that uh, we make sure that we are doing this as a uh, non admin user um so prab we are we are getting to the end of this 40 minutes call we need to get back um and we we probably won't be doing the third part because we we have completely run out of time yes, so yes. we we can finish this part and that that will probably go so if you don't mind we are going to restart the the call okay yeah sure yeah so let's meet you once again <laughs> Okay. Cool. So once again, we are going to be restarting the Zoom call. So so far, Prop has saw some more interesting things uh, related to GCP. We have been enumerating buckets in GCP. As you know, that's a very common um, first point entrance in AWS. Obviously, the the other clouds have the same problems. You can be granting permissions to all users or authenticated users, which means that anyone authenticated to the cloud is going to have those permissions. And if you give more permissions than the ones they deserve or they need, um, they could be able to, uh, well, compromise the bucket with sensitive information, write sensitive information, and compromise further parts of the cloud environment. So, yep. Yeah, um, so far, Prab has discovered a new bucket that we didn't have at the beginning with the dev prefix, and we found that we can set permissions. And I guess we are now going to give us administrator permissions and abuse those. So, man, if you want, you can share your screen again and, and continue with this path. Yes, sure. Yeah. So, back to GSUtil. So what we are trying to do is here, uh, we are sending a put request to a API and giving ourselves uh, admin privileges for this bucket, mm -hmm. which we just discovered. Uh, so CH is for change, and this is the permissions which you are giving. Okay. Cool. Enter. Could not create parent directory. Um, probably when you created the the user, either maybe the home directory wasn't created or it was it was created with permissions for root. So maybe we need to check that. You you are not you are not yes. in the home. You are in root desktop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it wasn't created. Yeah, it does not exist. <laughs> maybe maybe exit as uh, root, create it, and give yourself permissions. Let's, uh, so I used user add. So there is one more command, add user, which creates okay. user directory. 
test 1 to 3 okay yes yeah this is better <laughs> uh yes okay su test 1 to 3 yes this is good uh home directory yes it is there okay now that command should work go where is it copy paste enter okay okay so we didn't got any output for this but let's exist exit from here and if we uh, check permissions again using this GC, uh, mm -hmm. GCP bucket brute tool for our bucket, we got many more permissions. Yeah. Okay. So now we can list files, we can delete <coughs> files, we can update, we can. So basically, we are admin for this bucket. <coughs> now, uh, let's try to reload this. And we are able to list files mm -hmm. for this as well. Uh, let's use gsutil because it will show you in it will show you files in much proper format. And for that commands are these gsutil ls and uh, gs colon slash slash bucket name. ls is for listing files uh, gs colon slash slash and name of the bucket is this enter <coughs> yeah so we we have three folders within this bucket mm -hmm. dev bucket images shared and web files so as we are short on time <laughs> i already know that this folder is interesting uh, let's read shared folder. So this shared folder has two uh, subfolders. Mm -hmm. Files and scripts. Let's try to read files first. So in the files folder, we got dot sh folder. That definitely looks so if you guys is so now if you guys are already familiar with hack the box or in ctfs or even if you are familiar with your ubuntu vm or linux vm uh or if you have used as such so you might know that this folder contains sh private keys as well as public keys mm -hmm. and configuration files as well uh so let's try to read this folder and you can use minus r option for uh, uh, doing uh, reading the folder recursively okay so these are the files within this dot sh folder uh, so one thing you will uh, notice is which which pops out out of uh, which is non-default basically. So this file you will never see in a normal SH folder. Mm -hmm. Okay, means you you can check your own dot SH folder. You will never see a dot txt file in dot SH. So this is a non-default file, uh, and it is interesting because this means that this is uh, intentionally uh, placed there by the CTF developer. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can either directly read this using cat like this. I guess you forgot the slash config txt at the end. At the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So you need to give the file path. I was giving folder path. So we are able to read this. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. One more thing you can do is you can directly copy 
this file to your uh, to your current folder okay man also they are basically giving us the ap addresses where we can access bssh with all the keys that we have in this bucket uh so i have stored this file config.txt in my temp directory let's go there or uh, directly read this using sublime text slash temp slash config.txt yeah so this is the file okay uh and we got multiple ip addresses and we got host name for the machines mm -hmm. and we also got uh, means which which secret key is uh, being used for which machine cool and we also got usernames so now here uh, just by looking through the ip addresses you can determine which of these is public ip and which of these is uh, private ip addresses so ip address starting from 10 uh, are private ips okay and mm -hmm. the ips starting from 172 this is also class b if i i am not wrong yeah class b this is also uh, i have not never seen a public ip 172 Uh, I, I, or you can just uh you can do one thing just extract all these ip, IP addresses using regular expressions mm -hmm. and do an map scan for all of these <laughs> so I, i i already know that this ip is the ip which is running ssh server yeah so let's use that let's, one yeah yeah I, i think there are um public ip addresses that start with 172 not not all those are reserved as mm -hmm. public but yeah i'm not that, sure yeah they, they they are they are only a few so yeah yeah so uh, for doing this just copy the whole thing and go to chat gpt <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> fetch but chat fetch gpt is works. the is the new google instead of looking for things in google fetch, now we look them in in chat gpt fetch ip addresses let's see if it works sometimes it works uh you are telling me about ssh yeah. do yeah, my work please yeah. okay <laughs> let's uh, ignore this <laughs> uh so basically uh you can use the regular expression okay and fetch or if if the file is pretty huge but mm -hmm. it is Uh, already 47 lines only but if this file contains thousands of line you 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 have to use regular expression for fetching the ip addresses uh yeah that's said let's uh, do a port scan for this so we got uh, got to know that this uh, ip is running as a server and uh, the these flags are this minus pn is for disabling uh, ping scan this minus n is for disabling uh, dns resolution yep. this minus disable disable r ping yeah this is self explanatory and this is also not required because uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we are not in the layer 2 yeah we are external to this network okay yeah so we got to know that this uh, uh, this ip is running as a server let's try to and in this file we got to know that this is the file uh, secret key for this uh, ssh key for this uh, server yeah so so let's just a recap while you are doing this a uh, reminder for the people that just, just joined um we uh well we prop phone a hidden bucket he realized that all users have uh, permissions to set new privileges so he escalated privilege by giving himself administrator access and once he got administrator access he could list all the files inside this bucket and he found that there are a lot of um a lot of sensitive ssh case so now we are using one ssh key to to log in via ssh into our public uh host yeah okay okay uh so this is the file which we uh, just in dot pem we need to fetch mm -hmm. copy uh ls oh sorry and 
let's modify this path of the file. And I am saving this to temp directory again. Okay. And we got a just in dot pm. Okay. And if you run a file command as well on this slash temp slash just in dot pm. So this is a uh, RSA private key. Uh, so now for logging in, you uh, for using this key for authentication to SL server, we need to uh, modify permissions for this as well. So for uh, SSH key, you need to give read only permission for the current user. Mm -hmm. So for that, you can use 400. So 400 means, uh, or you can directly do this. You, uh, I forgot. Um, no, but well. I think that if you do this, the permission is going to be added, but the other ones aren't going to be removed. You need to do the 400 thing directly. U plus R, I think, is the one. So yeah. let's first remove the permissions, okay? Okay. Yeah. Let's see yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, so we removed all the permissions. And let's give u plus r reading permissions for the current user mm -hmm. and if i see again yeah so this is equivalent to 400 okay cool. and let's look at ssh just in ip address as different this Yes. Yeah. So we got logged in into a uh, assets uh, into a uh, compute engine. Okay, virtual machine. Awesome. And if you see, we are logged in as just a user. Uh, so now uh, initially, when I was solving this, what I did is I directly uh, ran uh, Carlos script in piece <laughs> here. And uh, uh, I got to know different things about this. Uh, you can also do that. Uh, so basically, we need to find what permissions this service account has. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so Carlos, what, what would you do here? I uh, means for uh, enumerating permissions. For the American permissions, um, mm -hmm. well, I will definitely use Limpis, as you said. Um, Limpis is also going to be dumping the service account credentials from the metadata mm -hmm. server. Yeah. So I guess that will be, that will should have sensitive permissions. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, link bees, oh, link bees. Just copy this, mm -hmm. paste. And so basically what is happening here is we are downloading this file and directly passing this to SH. Mm -hmm. And make sure you uh, respect on STP. <laughs> so it will take some time. In the meantime, uh, yeah, I have not ran Tmux inside that. Yeah. Uh, let's log in again. Uh, SSH just ten pm, and IP is this. So I just opened a new, uh, new, uh, a new tab. console. Yeah. And we are logging in again. And uh, meanwhile, lane page is running. Okay, here. Yeah. Uh, so let's do a normal enumeration. First, let's see. We are in 
home directory of the stem here. Files dot config file. So let's see if we have a G cloud configuration inside this. Because that's, that is our default location. No, mm -hmm. we don't have. Uh, we can try to list as such files. Dot as such is no fine. So we we are we are a little bit running out of time. Maybe maybe we should. Okay, okay, okay. Go to respect the thing. Yeah. So uh, let's uh. Uh, let's uh, use metadata API. Uh, this one. Call. And uh, it contains parameter. Let's put this thing in quotes. And minus capital H for. Uh, so let's uh, do this without that header first. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got error. Okay, uh, that's an error. You can see here, four zero three. So we for for uh, Google Cloud, we need to pass a header as well for accessing metadata API. <laughs> and minus H is the option for doing that. Enter. And now we are able to read. Uh, so going through this, you will get many things related to this. First thing is you will get a full host name uh, of this. Uh, so you can directly. So this this is a DNS name for uh, this instance. You can directly. Uh, use this for logging in for SSH and for everything. Okay, This is a host name for your IP. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is instance ID. You, you get uh, which image is being used for starting this VM. And image version. Uh, projects, instance machine type, okay. Oh, I don't know this. Config external IP, this is our public IP. Uh, internal IP you got. Mm -hmm. This is our internal IP which is assigned to this. Uh, MTU you got. Then VPC name. Okay. Then uh, service account. Okay. So this is a service account with which uh, which is configured for this uh, EC2. So sorry, compute engine. And this, if you see here, these scopes. So we have, uh, so what this scopes means is this uh, service account has some permission uh, for compute service. What I'm trying to say is uh, if you have uh, scopes for different services listed here while uh, in the metadata API, that means this service account has some permissions for uh, this compute service. I hope you are getting it. Uh, so basically, uh, this service account has some permissions to uh, uh, for running some API request for this compute service, as, as well as these other services. Pubs are and uh, mm -hmm. monitoring dot write logging dot write. Uh, so let's try to run first. First, we need to install uh, GCP Cloud here for this. Uh, GCP Cloud CLI. So if we see, it is already there. Uh, if yeah, Linp is still uh, running. Uh, so Linp will automatically tell you this. Okay. Yeah. That G, G Cloud is already there. Uh, so we have gcloud already available and if we run gcloud uh, compute list command for listing other instances 
and how i came to know that we can run this because we have this in instances okay in scopes this <coughs> so you can guess this uh, so currently we don't have any tool uh, like uh, for aws we have iem enumerate so we don't have currently uh, anything like that for gcp no uh, if i'm correct yeah well uh, there is something is. something similar called purple panda that you can use in in these cases um, purple panda yeah um so also something that is worth mention, mentioning i guess um in both aws and gcp the the cli tools will try to check the file name um the the default path where credentials are stored and if it doesn't find any credentials in there they are going to try to reach the metadata service to see if they can get credentials for there that's why in in perhaps console at the moment he could run gcloud and, and a command and it worked it, it, it didn't ask for the credentials it's because gcloud found the credentials in the metadata service Uh, so I think syntax was incorrect. Yeah, let's do. So let's you. see the uh, current account first. Auth list. <coughs> it's true that it's going terribly slow. Maybe due to this. But it will show you something like this, okay? This account name. Yeah. Uh, this should be the output. Yeah, we got this. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the account which is already configured. Okay. Uh, and if you don't want to, if you can also run this using your G Cloud CLI. You need to fetch credentials first which this will show and then we can configure that as well uh if i am correct i have not done that we can yeah, do yeah. that no carlos you can do that you can do that yeah yeah maybe we'll we'll see if we get time uh, uh so next thing is not this listing the compute instances what is the command for that g cloud yeah this command so i was entering wrong command i just <coughs> ignored this instances mm -hmm. so this is the correct command so let's try to list uh instances uh so currently we are in developer vm and there is another uh, vm that is admin vm and uh, in gcp uh, we by default we can ssh to other vms okay so we are already in developer vm and uh, let's try to get into uh, login into this using uh, ssh so the command for that will be G cloud. Well, I you, uh, you mean that by the by default you have permissions to SSH into other machines? Yes, what uh, what I have read in the documentation, yes, I'm not sure. Well, I'm very sure that's not true. By default, for being in a in a in a Means machine, you don't in, have within SSH same... permissions. Okay. Okay. Um, then I I am uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I I I I'm I guess, not sure then. I guess uh, I would need to check this, but I guess that in mm -hmm. in case where you have the default compute service account with half a lot of privileged permissions, and in case you allow um, all the scopes, maybe mm -hmm. one of the permission is SSH. I I don't know that. But I know that by default, if you create yeah, an default, instance, uh, you are not going to get this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. It will be terribly bad if if you do, <laughs> like terribly bad. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. 
So let's see link PCI. It is completed. So first let's complete this demo. Then we will see uh, to configure the credentials. Uh, so there is another API uh, which you can use that is uh, for compute service, uh, which lets you to directly uh, transfer your keys to this VM if you have permissions and uh, by default you don't have, but in this case you have. Okay. So it will ask you any password, just type enter, enter again. Yes. So this is updating the metadata API for that uh, admin VM. Mm -hmm. And we are able to run this because we have permission. <coughs> uh, so now we got into admin VM. Uh, now, again, we need to run LinPs here and enumerate our permissions. But uh, we can directly use the metadata API once again. Yeah. Call. Let me fetch that. This. And if you see here, our current service account is this for this VM. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will see in the scopes auth cloud platform. 